Hey, I am Abhimanyu. Here I am introducing a title, Mastering ASP.NET video series in English and Hindi language. Post your all valuable comments and feedbacks over this given URL, itorian.com slash article slash ASP.NET slash post slash 296. Blog on itorian.com. Find my Facebook URL here, 2050.itorian and on Twitter, you can tweet me at itorian. And to mail me, abhikumarwatsa at yahoo.co.in. Hi, this is my very first video of this learning series. This is video number one and title is Introduction to ASP.NET. Myself, Abhimanyu Kumar Vatsa. In this video, you will learn introduction to ASP.NET and introduction of traditional ASP.NET. And in addition to these productions, you are going to learn common language runtime, framework class library, common language specification, what is classes, namespaces, assemblies, and what is intermediate languages and what are the meaning of manage execution, mainframe, metadata, attributes and how to choose the programming language in ASP.NET. So let's uh, start learning. Introduction to ASP.NET. ASP.NET is the new web application framework uh, developed by Microsoft in about January 2002 with the very first version of the .NET 1.0 that allow full featured environment for web developers ASP.NET is successor to Microsoft ASP, that is Active Server Pages. We call ASP.NET as the next version of ASP. ASP.NET is built on common language runtime, that is CLR technology, which allow programmers to develop web applications using any supported .NET languages that includes C sharp, VB, F sharp, etc. In 1997, Internet Information Services (IIS4) were released by Microsoft, began researching possibilities for a new web application model that would solve common complaints about traditional ASP like clean coding, content management, logical design, and many more. Now let's switch on next slide to learn uh, traditional ASP. I'm not wishing to verdict any web designer. What I'm wishing is to show the usefulness of ASP.NET over traditional ASP. You may be an experienced web developer of ASP or just uh, started learning. In either cases, it is useful to review the ASP technology that preceded ASP.NET. ASP is a server-side scripting technology. It is also known as classical ASP or traditional ASP because it was the first server-side scripting language by Microsoft. Microsoft created this technology to easy the development of interactive web application. Using ASP, developers can use client-side scripting as well as server-side scripting. For example, if you want to validate user input to access database, web pages with .asp file extension uses ASP. Pages with .aspx extension uses compiled ASP.NET, which makes them faster and more robust than server-side scripting in traditional ASP. Now let's switch to next slide where we will learn the benefits of ASP.NET. By teaching over the year, I observed that many students who are new to ASP.NET feel fundamental difficulties because ASP has a straightforward approach to create websites. For example, with ASP, it was fairly obvious to most of us that there is an impenetrable gulf between the server and client because HTTP is stateless, meaning that the browser and server only respond to individual page requests and do not maintain any kind of a state between requests. Now look at those points. ASP.NET has huge language support than traditional ASP. It includes ADO.NET, VB, C Sharp, C++, JavaScript, jQuery, and many more. ASP.NET has huge library for programmable controls. ASP.NET supports event-driven programming feature. That is the main point. ASP.NET uses XML-based components, better user authentication account, role management, etc. ASP.NET uses compiled code, which increases the performance of website. ASP.NET has very easy configuration and deployment process. Now let's switch to next slide where we will understand the basics of .NET platform. Microsoft .NET platform is a new set of technologies collectively known as .NET framework. The .NET framework provides platform for simplified rapid development for web, cloud, mobile, windows based application. .NET framework has following building blocks, common language runtime, framework class library, common language specification, intermediate languages. 
Now I am going to switch on next slide where we will learn each of these points one by one. Yeah, now the point is common language runtime that is CLR. Actually CLR is implementation of CLI that is command line interface and it is the core runtime of Microsoft.NET framework for executing applications which support multi-language execution. The common language runtime CLR supplies managed code with services such as cross language integration, code access security, object lifetime management, resource management, it is ASP.NET, VB, C Sharp are the top examples of CLR technology. Now the point is framework class library FCL. FCL is set of reusable object oriented classes that provides basic platform functionality from the data access classes of ADO.NET to file security utility access including file, directory and stream class to network classes that allow easy implementation of DNS resolution. FCL also contains all classes that makes up ASP.NET. These include classes that implement all of the functionality of the ASP intrinsic object as well as classes that provides additional functionality from a rich engine for catching output and data to the ASP.NET server control model. This functionality brings to ASP.NET the simplicity of control based development that has been available to visual basic developers also. Now the point is common language specification. CLS is a subset of types supported by the CLR common language run as well as a set of rules that language and compiler designers must follow. The purpose of CLS is to provide robust interoperability between .NET languages including the ability to inherit classes written in one .NET language to other .NET language and even cross language debugging. Now the point is intermediate language. Always keep in mind when we compile a C -sharp program, the code is translated into series of evaluation stack instructions. These instructions are known as IL that is intermediate language. IL is also known as MSIL that is Microsoft Intermediate Language that is processor independent representation of executable code. IL is generated by each of the language compilers that target CLR technology. Now we are going to take a look at dotted framework keys. I have mentioned here classes, namespaces and assemblies. The next slide we are going to learn each of these points. Classes is blueprint of an object. It contains the definition for how to particular object will instantiate it at runtime such as properties and methods that will be exposed publicly by the object and any internal storage structure. Classes are the blueprint of object that contains definition that how particular object will be instantiated at the runtime. Class body can contain methods, data declarations, access specifier etc. You can see an example on the screen. There is class by name person. I have declared here a field name and a constructor of this class. I have assigned the value of name by unknown and I have also created a method here by name set name. And to use this class, I have created an object of the person class by a person. This console will print unknown on the screen. Again, I am calling a method that is set name passing the parameter for the new name John Smith and on the console I am printing it. So this is a nice example of a class. Now switch to next slide to learn namespace. Namespace is a key part of the .NET framework. It provides a scope to both pre-installed framework classes and custom developed classes. It has public access and this is not modifiable. It also provides a way to avoid name classes if you are working on a, on a big project. It is heavily used in .NET programming. On your screen you can see an example. To print on the console we need to write system.console.writeLine. So if I have to print 10 or 20 times this line, I need to write a complete coding here. So to sort it, we can import the name using system and then console.writeLine. The second example you can see I am not using a complete line system.console.writeLine. Now switch on the next slide to learn assemblies. Assemblies are the fundamental unit of deployment of the .NET platform. The .NET framework itself is made of number of assemblies including msurlib.dll and many more. An assembly contain intermediate language generated by a specific language compiler. Assembly can contain classes, structures, interfaces and resources that an application requires at the runtime. Compilation of a program creates intermediate language that is IL 
and metadata. Metadata contains description of the program such as classes, interfaces and dependencies and the versions of the component that are being used in the program. IL and metadata are linked to an assembly. In general we can find our assemblies in the projects bin folder. Now switch on next slide where we will learn how to select programming language either C sharp or VB. Choosing which language to use when developing a SP.NET application is very important. Even it is not compulsory to choose language once in an application, you can change the language anytime in ASP.NET based applications. So it is very flexible in ASP.NET. But I will be choosing C sharp throughout this videos. Look at the table. If you know ASP with VB script or Visual Basic developer, it will be very good if you choose Visual Basic .NET. Because both are very similar. If you know ASP with JavaScript, it will be nice if you choose javascript.net. If you are a programmer of C, C++ or Java, then I will recommend to choose C sharp. So this is theory part of this video series. Don't worry if you are not getting all the points I am discussing here. Because I am sure uh, after watching all the practical videos, you will understand all these simple points. Thank you.